Go ahead and turn off your video. And good evening, everyone, and welcome back to uh, Coach's Corner video review with uh, Sir Helga. Um, we're going to give a second for our guests to uh, jump in here and welcome everybody. All right, how's everybody doing tonight? Not too bad, not too bad. I mean, we're only starting like seven minutes late, and I showed up on time. I think we're winning. That's a plus. Killing it. Seems like I just did this yesterday or something, but it's uh, <laughs> could have been. It's almost oh geez, okay. Well, uh, and it, it has been a little bit since we've done one of these on the coach's corner. Um, done some video review. We we had a big block we did at the uh, beginning of this year that um, I think uh, a lot of a lot of fighters got some really good information on um, what they can do post COVID to to start working on their fighting, and we put out a call for more interested parties, and we got a whole list of folks lined up. So I think at this point we have uh, episodes on video review lined up for once a month for until about November. So we've got a handful of folks, and as, as people come back to, to getting fighting on a regular basis, we'll have some more, more recent video. Um, but at the same time, we always encourage people to follow your local guidelines for, uh, for preventing uh, COVID transmission as best as possible. And um, definitely don't want to encourage anybody to, to run any unnecessary risk just for the sake of uh, doing a video review. So tonight, as always, uh, I'm joined by Sir Helga. Uh, whose name is right there in the title, one of the best analysts in our sport, and uh, his grace Thorfinn, um, also one of our fine, fine video analysts. Uh, of course, I'm Duke Sean. Uh, tonight, we have uh, our guests tonight are um, uh, His Lordship uh, Brick from the East Kingdom and Lord Blackwolf from the, the West Kingdom. So welcome, gentlemen. Uh, Brick, you want to give us a little introduction about how long you've been fighting and where you're at? Sure. Uh, I have been fighting for pre-COVID. I had been fighting for about seven years. I started in 2013. Um, I'm squired to Viscount Cullen, uh, who was in the West and is now back in the East. Uh, I am a member of the Order of the Tigers Combatant, which is the East Kingdom's Order of High Merit Award for Fighting. Uh, I have been an unbelted champion for both singles and melee at Penzik a number of times, uh, and I'm the current uh, consorts champion for armored combat in the East. Cool. And Black Wolf, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I am Lord Black Wolf, otherwise known as Kar Taishona. I've been fighting pre-COVID was four years. Um, I am squire to His Majesty Duke Uther. Um, yeah, just uh, trying to get back into the flow of things. Cool. So as we get into uh, video review tonight, a um, couple of uh, disclaimers and, and caveats to let everybody know about um, about how we um, how we do this. Um, so we are. Hang on a second. I'm trying to trying to work the all the controls here too. Um, there you go. So um, as we do the video review, uh, some of the things that, that we're looking at, um, first off, we are looking at this uh, from a, a perspective where we learn more from our failures and we do our successes. Um, so you're going to hear us talking about 
um, instances where we have uh, recognized a, a failing in the fight for these um, two specific fighters. Um, any, and um, so we're, we're going to be focusing on fights that they have lost or where they've been hit or, or a blow has been recognized. And we are going to look at that as a failure on their part, as opposed to a success on the part of uh, whoever had, had hit them. Um, again, that's that that's the basic mindset that we learn more from our failures and we do our successes. This is how we isolate deficiencies um, and break these things down because the deficiencies are the things that we can then send these guys on with a solid plan to how they're going to work that out of their out of their fighting. So it is important to understand that we're not just having these guys on so we can beat up on them uh, about their fighting just to, to feel good about their, ourselves. We're genuinely trying to trying to help them become better fighters. And for for all of us as trainers, that means we are uh, focusing on what's wrong so we can work those things out. Um, but we're doing this obviously with the best intentions. And first off, we, we'd like to um, offer our appreciation, our thanks to um, these two fine gentlemen for coming on and allow, allowing us to uh, pick apart their fights. Um, and uh, see with that, I think I am going to uh, let Helga uh, kind of cover some of the stuff I might have missed there. I can tell it's been a while, Sean. You're, you know, you and I are a little stumbly at this. Like it is, it is. We're, been a while. we're, as, we're as rusty about this as we are our fighting right now. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things that Sean just went over is basically the idea of ruthless self-assessment. Um, this show is actually about that. Um, and so we're going to truthfully look at deficiencies and go from there. Um, also, one of the things we do behind the scenes is we ask the people that are coming onto the show how ruthless they are comfortable with. This is a very open conversation that we have with them because sometimes us coaches can get a little sassy um, and it's meant in a fun, playful way, but there is a communication conversation that happens beforehand and a consent conversation that happens beforehand about this. Um, and so hang on for this ride because again, we're gonna be truthful and we're gonna be blunt, but we're also here to give them places forward. It's not just you suck and then we're gonna go from there um, because that would get nobody anywhere. Uh, so the second part is to our amazing people that are volunteering to do this, stop us and ask questions. Please feel free. This show is here for you. You have volunteered to go into a public forum and be a part of this and let us break down your fights. Um, stop us if you ask, if you have a question, if you need a clarification, if something that we have said is not clear, because one of the things that's going to end up happening is that all three coaches have different, they have a different lexicon. We have a different way of talking about the fight. We have different things we see in the fight. That's the reason why the group of us are here doing this. And so if one of us sees something that you don't understand, hit, pump the brakes. Tell us, hey, I don't understand what you just said. We're here for you. And if we spend the entire show just discussing that, it's still a win because we're trying to give you the tools and I guarantee you're gonna help somebody else out there with it. Uh, so, and with that, be bold with us. Tell, tell us, hey, I got a question. Stop the show right in the middle of it. It's all good. None of us are going to be offended. That also goes for you out in the audience. You see something? We'll try to get to it in text or we'll go ask, uh, we'll answer it later because we actually go back in the comments and talk about it. So you got something that comes up, ask the question in the comments. That way we can continue to address and get the information out there. All right. Uh, Thorfinn, anything else you want to cover? Yeah, I just want to say if you guys uh, have the opportunity to take notes, please take notes while you're, uh, we're reviewing your fights. That way you can then ask us questions about something that came up in your mind. In the past, we've run into this where people have said many times, oh, geez, if I would just sort of take notes. Take notes, it's okay. Um, you know, you can always, uh, like, like Helga said, ask us questions at any point. Um, and it's, this is about, like they said, reviewing you authentically, uh, not necessarily savagely. And so uh, we're gonna give you our our input okay that being said i look forward to uh watching both of us your guys videos so let's go all right all caveats and disclaimers aside let's go ahead and uh jump in the video with first one we're going to start with uh brick um just give me just a second to bring this up that's one you see that all right Hang on. Okay. All right. 
like I said, the uh, video was kind of straight and sketchy before. Is it coming through okay? Yeah, I can see it fine. And uh, Brick is Brick is in the yellow. And, yeah, Brick uh, Brick is in the yellow. That's yep. what I thought. Okay, just wanted to make sure. And this one looks like he's fighting uh, Sir Jonathan. Yep. Okay. You know what we failed to ask, Brick? What he was working on right now. Oh, that's a fair question, actually. Before we before we it. actually <laughs> analyze this video, we should probably ask that. There you go. Yeah, what, where, sure. Okay, so what, this video is pretty recent, though. Yes. Yeah, so this was first practice back uh, post-COVID, uh, and we did like a four-hour bear pit in my night's okay, backyard. So let's let's throw this out to you. What were What were you wanting to work on, and what are you working on? Uh, both are the same right now. It's, uh, it's trying to find the balance between patience and aggression and uh, in line with that being uh, energy efficient. Because um, sure. one, one of my biggest issues, especially in tournaments, is I, I tend to get hyper aggressive and gas out really early. And then, you know, as I progress farther into the tournament, I will uh, not have the gas to, to keep going and my fight gets really sloppy and really bad. So I'm trying to uh, remedy that. Okay, thank you. All right, let's get back to it. <clears throat> that was a nice leg shot, by the way. Yeah, it was. There you go. Right in the armpit. Yep. I'm slow this down. Ooh. That one, that one. All right, so we're going to slow this down to about half speed and watch, uh, watch this chat. Oh shit. God damn it. Wrong button. Interesting. Come back and up here. All right. So you're gonna see here. So he comes off that flat snap. You throw offside. Yeah, hit in the pit. Yeah, they're probably stung. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. So, why did you throw the offside? Um. So, I, I like to. So when I'm when I'm fighting someone who's legged, I like to try to bind up the sword with the shot and then close the gap. Um, and I, I think in this instance, I, A, didn't close the gap well enough, and B, didn't get my shield into a position that was protecting my offside at all. Can I jump in? Yeah, yeah go ahead, there. I think I think for sure what your analysis is pretty accurate about what you did was you you threw that shot way too early, right? Um, you're, if you look at the distance, you're, you're pretty far from him to be able to throw yeah. that offside body shot. And that gives him a lot of opportunity to drop that little buckler back into his armpit to, to defend himself. Um, but then as you stepped in, you, you're you now already across your own body, right? And so that's why he attacked your offside body and got, managed to, to smack that armpit, it looks like. But um, I think it was just a timing a, a, a problem. And I think if you were to do that with a half step in, you would have had a, a, probably a successful shot. And at this point, also, you're kind of your sword and your, your uh, offside, your sword is actually tangling your shield to move across to protect your offside body as well. That's, that's my assessment right there. Yeah, and part of that, too, is as, as he throws the, the flat snap to begin with, <clears throat> um, 
at, he throws the one and then he is in recovery right and as you start throwing this so he, he throws that up there you got a really good block on that um but as he's coming as his sword is coming back and uh, to his shoulder he's already throwing the offside before you start throwing yours yeah you see how he's caught, got that cocked back there? Yeah, it's already, it's yeah, already yeah. triggered, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's already triggered. So he's already thrown that before before you throw that. Um, and I don't think it's really necessarily a, a, a combination, but um, but he was already on his way into throwing this. And so with you throwing to that offside, and, and also you kind of went all in on that offside on that arm as well, um so you weren't really suppressing it you were um like you're 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 thrown into this and you're kind of kind of banking on that um and <clears throat> that means your recovery off of this is sort of stunted a little bit um because you're putting so much into into to hitting that that one and i don't know that it's you're not necessarily trying to hit it harder um but you are kind of committed to that and then there's really nowhere else for you to go there the 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 flow of your recovery doesn't come off of that it's like you you hit the one thing and and also it kind of pauses for a second right there um yeah as it lands um and and meanwhile he's already in motion going to that offside does that make sense yeah yeah the other thing that i'll, I'll bring up again um from when we were talking before the show was uh, one of my, one of my biggest issues is and always has been that I uh, fight to not die, especially if I'm going against someone who I know has kind of like a specific shot against me uh, that is particularly effective. And in this case with Jonathan and with Antonio, you'll see as well, uh, they both have that and for Jonathan. It's that, that offside. Um, Interesting. So that's, that's definitely something I'd like to, to talk through and think about. And they and then you still got hit by it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And that, that's, that, says, that says a lot right there. All right, Helga. Okay, so uh, I'm going to say that the other, uh, that both Thorfinn and Sean were very, very nice, uh, and I'm taking the gloves off. Uh, this is a really classic example. Sean, can you back up to that flat snap that he blocks? Uh, this is a very classic example of a fear-based pre-programmed fight where you are also trying to be a little bit of a bully so you can win. Um, and the bully comes out of the fear. Uh, you are trying to beat his technique instead of seeing what he's doing. So you have taken all the adaptability out of your fight and it starts at this flat snap. Um, and so when you block that flat snap, one, you way over block it. So you're coming in and everything's committed to that and you want the offside. You never even realize that you have a body shot, you have a flat snap. Anything that you had done laterally towards that shield side, you would have crushed him for and closed the line. This means you're not looking at your opponent. You're trying to survive your opponent. And this is a really bad headspace to be in and a really frustrating headspace to be in because you are giving them everything for free. Which because, is also the thing that you said was your problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so this is, uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say it, it pretty bluntly is what you need to stop worrying about is surviving what they can hit you with and trying to see it before they throw. Because this right here, you committed so hard to the other side when you didn't need to. Do you, do you see any of the free motion that you have towards, towards if you took a lateral step towards his shield side, how you would have one closed that line and it would have given you more lines of attack? Yeah, totally. Were, yeah, you are so fixated on I need to hit him with that off body because he can hit me with X, Y, and Z. And then he chose to hit you with A. So don't eliminate your choices. Uh, this speaks to rushing the fight. And we're going to see this in a couple of your other videos. You want to rush the fight right now. Um, and this is a side effect of you actually trying not to like overbear your opponents. You know how to survive a fight when you wade in and go for broke. Now you're trying to increase range and you're trying to start seeing them, which means you're getting jumpy. Um, and this is really, you locked yourself out of this fight. Does that, does that make sense of like, yeah, totally, hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. And also you notice um, right here when, when you line up for the side before he throws that flash snap with your, your uh, shield with your sword in front of your shield this way, you are in a purely defensive uh, mindset right now. 
Mm -hmm. your sword is really not in a position for you to to throw any offense so you are using your sword and your shield entirely for defense instead of you know the the defense tool for defense and the offense tool for offense like your offensive tool is not available for you to use it offensively does that make sense yeah and also as you so as you throw this you catch you catch that flat snap right and you block it with your sword which is fine but in going to this offside that you wanted to throw right you're throwing the thing that you wanted to throw from the outset yeah right you um so it's a little bit of pre-programming not not quite yeah. that much usually when we see pre-programming of, of a fight we'll see somebody sitting out at range and then they'll decide how the fight's going to go and then they'll just jump in and start throwing shit right so there's a little bit of that where your body had decided that, that you're going to throw the offside and so as he throws that flat snap and you block it with your sword that has stunted your um your offensive throw so I want you to watch the mechanics involved in you throwing this um, offside, um, this offside body shot, because your 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 sword, you, you just you're not getting the kind of stick rotation you need. So the stick mechanics aren't really optimal for actually being able to hit something. So you've made you might have made contact with his arm as as he was throwing that, but I don't think you would have felt the thing on this. So. Just kind of keep it, and, and again, it comes from the fact that with this block right here, you wanted to throw the offside, but when he threw into your stick, that throws off the mechanics of what you wanted to do. So it's not like whatever your textbook offside looks like, you don't get that because he fouled your delivery. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And looking at this, like, I, I totally get what you're talking about with the pre programming because from that position, the organic thing for me to do is to throw something to the onside, right? Sure. Like I, I feel like I, from, from that, that kind of hanging guard, like, yeah, absolutely. The offside or that, or especially it's is, is much more organic than. Really especially after the, the impact has created you to have to have a muscle reset, right? So there's like a 10th of a second where your muscles have to refire. Right. And, and so for you to go back that same direction, pretty hard, but the, so the other thing I wanted to point out is, right here your feet are really square with him right yeah. you could have done a step uh you know and but this is all based on you kind of getting like kind of uh, stymied by the uh, his original attack um and so i i think that you could have gone to like uh, any type of an off an onside and then maybe an offside attack it depend on what he would open um do, does he normally fire these type of sh i mean so do you is this like a sweet shot for you? Is this like your favorite shot you want to throw or, or a favored shot? Uh, I definitely throw a lot of deep offsides coming from where okay. I come from. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, I felt looking at it. I was like, I think this is his, one of his favorites. And it felt to me like you were going to do it no matter what. Instead of yeah, letting yeah. the fight extrapolate out in a, what I would say, an organic method where yes. um, you would spot where his opening was as you flowed through the fight. So instead of having you, Sean pointed out that he attacked your weapon which caused it to freeze which then stopped you from the entire process of you being able to throw that offside body properly right um but if you if you didn't have a plan and this is where me and brad also will talk about this later but <laughs> if you would have just let this happen organically i think you could have gone someplace else probably his onside body or hip would have been a really nice attack and then roll straight into another onside uh, head so from the hip to or body to head would have been a good combo from there because uh, he's feeling like you're going to go across his body so he's reaching across already see he's already going across that body yeah but i mean well, and, fun, and, fun stuff. yeah like thorfinn was talking about yeah you know, when, you, when you take the blow that he that he throws and you take the energy from that blow um let's look at the what i refer to as the natural return path Sure, the transfer, for, yeah. for a blow which usually i'm talking about um your delivery but this is a good one where you get to take the energy that he has created on his flat snap so if you watch watch what happens here as he throws this you block this up as he hits your stick it actually moves your stick yep. towards your towards your offside or towards your run side right and by doing that it's creating motion and so as it's creating motion going this way, 
you can just roll right through the shoulder into that into that onside attack, right? I think because exactly that's right. That's where the stick already wants to go because that's the way he is pushing it. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. The energy of his stick has pushed this up, and you're going to see this. It's very subtle, but watch as, as your hand comes up and he hits that basket. Look what happens to your hand. See your hand going up? If you were to follow that line and come right back around, flat snap, rib, uh, wrap to the ribs, there's any number of things you get to hit onside. Exactly. So, so and this is where I was saying that it, that it fouled your, your mechanic because you wanted to throw that offside. And so now instead of following the natural return path and following the energy that he has created for you, you are fighting against that energy to try to throw the thing that you decided you were going to throw. And so that again is where we talk about what, what Thorfinn was saying is allowing the fight to happen organically. And that's what I was, I was mentioning in, in the, the thing I sent you on the offensive mindset, allowing mm -hmm. the fight to happen. Um, uh, you know, you, you have to allow the fight to, to develop organically without the fight happening to you exactly. because that's a bad place to be, right? You, you don't want these, you don't want it to happen to you, but you want to kind of go along with what is being given to you. And in this case, he gave you a direction that would have made a throw to um, the, the sword side, your onside would have been faster. And considering he's already throwing the offside, probably... Yeah probably would have crossed swords with him on the way to throwing this offside. Make sense? Yeah, 100%. Elga, you got anything else on that? All right. I think that we can actually watch some other videos because we've kind of hyper-focused on this one this one chunk, uh, and there's other things to see in his fights. Yep. And going on to the but, next one with Colin? All in all, good fight. <laughs> yeah. Also, is my mic volume better? Because I realized I was running off my, my PC's mic, not my... Yeah. yeah, it's good. Okay, so we start off with. I don't know, it looks like you blocked that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. There you go. Yep. Well, okay. I hit that off. Yeah. <clears throat> so Colin throws this offside, and you're both going high, and that brings your shield across. Yeah, I don't <laughs> – I'm much better at, at speaking to uh, the type of shield that uh, Colin's using, obviously. Yeah, uh, that's than a, kite. You know, than a side-strapped kite. But I think that uh, uh, intrinsically they're the same, that that center line has to always be up and down which is, um, you know, really hard to do. And, and so what happens here is that the center line gets to really right between his legs, and then you lose the, the greatest advantage of the Kai shield, which is this long um, bottom section to defend yourself with, and he gets cut in the leg for it. Uh, I also think that maybe Colin did a little bit of a, a press there, and, and I'm just seeing that now maybe. It definitely bound up my offside head with, with the shield, 100%. Your offside what? I now? threw an offside head. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought, you was, said your, 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 I thought you were saying your, your own head. I was like, well, he no, can't be no, doing no, that. No. <laughs> but, oh, I see what you're saying. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Were you, uh, were you counterbalancing when you threw that offside head? What do you mean by that? Uh, so you throw this last snap right here. Right. Um, and you, you're, you're going to go right into the offside head from there. Right. And it looks like you're bringing your shield across your body to counterbalance. Yeah. Exactly. And that's where, that's really where it got bound up. Cause you, you threw it across to, yep. to counterbalance. And I think he was able to maybe press it or just kind of keep it there long enough yep. to, to be yeah. able to come off that. And at the same time, he's coming off this offside head. It's frozen your sword. And he is following the natural return path. Um, sorry. He's going to follow the natural return path, which is going to, that's what leads to him getting that leg. See how his hand's going right through his shoulder? Yeah. Comes off this offside head. His hand comes through the shoulder. And he fires down, yeah. Perfect. Right? 
That's I mean, his, shield, his shield works a little weird, but uh, it was effective. Yeah. Well, and Colin's a, Colin's a glaive guy for the most part. I know. I know. Yeah. 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 Um, but, so, you know, yeah, that, he, was a, that was technically the fact that he's using a sword and shield. I mean, that's a plus, right? <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Colin. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, no, but, no seriously, he, I, I think I think that's that's exactly right, Sean. Is that this offside freezes his sword, and then as he comes across, you know, he does a press or something right there. It looks like to me like not maybe not even a press, just like a hold the shield as an obstacle so he can't move his shield. Yeah, right. It doesn't have to be a press; it just has to be there. Well, and then, here's here's the oh, other thing too, it's though. Pretty far. Yeah, if you yeah, if ahead. you watch what's happening, so Brick comes off of off that flat snap, and so. So you're bringing your hand back to, to be able to throw that offside. And as you do, look how far, I mean, your, yeah, your shield is up under your armpit. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's exactly right. And, and Colin is, his hand is already going back in recovery. So by the time, so your shield is going the opposite way of where his hand is going. Break, break. Is this a standard setup for your, your, your favorite offside body? Uh, generally, yeah. Have you, oh, do you, I, do you I, normally I, use it? Yeah, I, I know exactly where you're going with this uh, style. Where, where would you say, do, do you use a hook or a press ever uh, with that offside body? Have you ever taken and 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 hooked the shield with it? I, I'll hook it? occasionally, but not not frequently. I think okay. my, my the biggest issue that I'm seeing with how I'm executing in these two fights is I'm not, that shot specifically, well, the binding and, and stuff aside, like I'm not stepping. Uh, yeah, clearly your footwork. Like, like I'm, I'm like rather than you know, I'm starting goofy foot, and rather than stepping with my left foot to be my forward foot on that 45, I'm, I'm squaring up. I feel like. Yep, and, Brent, and we're going to talk about that. Through. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't. You, this could be just an out of practice thing, but yeah, balls of your feet and that movement, that ability to make that quick sudden movement is going to be huge. And uh, yeah. as the the opportunity arises right there, you could have done a quick like half step even and yeah. then allowed you to get in there well and so i'm gonna let the other kids talk i'm talking too much go ahead Helga. all right so we're gonna go back to simple basics on this one um i think uh they brick you actually are spotting a bigger issue than anything your shield or sword is doing um and this issue is actually based out of the fact that your feet and your knees and your hips and your shoulders are not connected at all you are fighting very very strong which is allowing you to force your shots, which is making it so you don't have a return path, which is making it so your shield doesn't actually follow in line of the fight. Um, this is a classic example of somebody that is developing past being strong that hasn't learned how to connect their body yet. Um, so the reason why you're having power issues, the reason why you can't actually step and you're overcommitting in your steps is the fact that your hips are not engaged. Your back is overbent and you're backwards when you're trying to lean out of a fight and create range and you are leaning forward and leading with your head coming into range. Now seeing this in two different fights, I can guarantee you we're gonna see it in every other video. Um, and so where you need to go to, to get over the idea of rushing the fight and pre-programming the fight is going back to very simple basics. Um, how do you approach the fight? How do you walk in and know that you can drive from your back heel to deliver power while keeping your shield quiet? Because right now, basically you're, too, you're, you're connected in parallel to the ground. Uh, which is a really interesting thing. And so your shoulders are connected. So if your sword moves, your shield moves. If your hips move, that's it. And then your feet kind of fall in line behind. If your feet move, they're accidental. Um, and so what I'm going to say is actually looking at both these fights right now is you actually need to go back to your basics so you can be confident in your knowledge. You know you can hit these guys. You actually have the knowledge and mechanics. You and I have geeked out about this. You just called out a very, very specific thing in your fight where you're not making lateral motion. You're not making lateral motion because you're not in balance. And so we need to get you back in balance so you can actually move into a fight and out of a fight and create lateral motion without falling one direction or another. And that's gonna be the big call out I have. I don't care how out of position your shield was and I don't care about your sword recovery path right now because neither of those matter if you're just falling into all of it. That was that was one of the things I was going to mention is uh, you're throwing you're throwing strong you're throwing with just just your arm pretty much you're not really using a lot of uh, sword mechanics because you don't have to because you're big enough and you're strong enough that you can just kind of uh, power through that 
And some of what we're seeing is you trying to put more muscle into this um, to be able to get the power instead of using better mechanics. So, uh, and one of the things that, well, I, well, I just roasted you on that. I'm gonna actually talk about a couple of things that you can do to help with this is one, stop starting your fight in range. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Uh, this is the biggest, this is the biggest thing that we do to all of ourselves at practice. Like even the high end guys do this is they walk in to the edge of measure and that's where the fight starts because we're lazy AF. That is not where the fight starts on the list field. How often do we start in measure on the list field? The marshals separate us. You have a transitionary step between out of range to in range. And right now this is not developed in your fight, which means you're always trying to catch up. It's going to leave you tense when starting a fight. So you're going to go from relaxed, we're at practice, we're at practice to tense, and then you're going to go. So I want to see you start your fight out longer so you can learn how to step into range and control range that way. And I want you to actually just play around with your body. Like when you're moving your sword around, can you feel that tension to the other foot? So crossways, like an X goes across your body. Can you feel that tension through your body? Do you need to tighten your abs a little bit? Are you leaning backwards? You need to start playing with your own body to understand where you're at. Because then when you watch these videos, you're going to be like, oh, okay, cool. I was leaning back. I was stepping too hard. I was leaning on that foot. I was only using my arm in that. And what you need to start doing is on the Pell is almost setting yourself up for failure. So like lean out in a way, get yourself completely out of balance and then put yourself back in balance. So you know how to recover this. Um, and that's going to be say the biggest thing is like, you got some mad skills here. You're like keeping up with the big dogs and they're trying to throw at you. Um, but I think that the next stage in your growth is actually going, ripping all the way back down to the basics and relearning your body and relearning your body is going to give you the confidence to walk in and out of range and to know that you've got those blocks. And so that's where I'm going to say that I think that you should go with your fights right now. Hey, I got a question for you. You said that you were, uh, running out of juice pretty quick uh, in the fight. Was that arm and hand are tired? No, it's it's uh, it's wind. Um, oh, okay, I, well. I, I don't get muscle fatigue much um, when I okay. fight. I, I, I definitely get winded before that. And uh, outside of just doing more cardio, one of the things that I've, I've been told is uh, I need to work on kind of uh, the mental fortitude component of it. When you're when you're sure. exhausted beyond exhausted, being able to to give that extra, well, that there's, there's definitely part of that that dig down. You got to be able to dig down at the end, and I can tell you that every fighter at the end of every tournament is tired, right? So if you got that extra little dig there, you can do. But breathing is huge, and that's a real problem with, uh, especially with people that take a break. I was just going through it myself. Um, you know, I've been fighting for 30 years and, I, and I, I'm having to do this. Oh yeah. Remember to breathe. Right. And so when you come back, if you can do like a, a, a training process, uh, I've been copying this, like a Lomachenko type of breathing idea where, uh, during the, the standard part of the fight, you breathe normally, but during the actual, uh, impact part of the fight, you kind of like, almost like a key, like a, an exhale, like a tight exhale which forces your body to breathe, right? And so I found that I wasn't running out of that energy, right? And so I think uh, on Coach's Corner, we actually have a video in the uh, uh, the library there uh, on this Lomachenko breathing style. Uh, but check that out. Um, that, and I gotta tell you, footwork, man, footwork wins fights, brother. And so if you if you need to, to really focus on uh, making sure that you've, your balls are your feet at all times, um, you know, so that way your movement is, 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 it can happen organically. You can go anywhere. Right. Uh, and, and other than that, I think that that was my, uh, my big input. Point. <laughs> By the way, your kit looks awesome. Thank you. So, I mean, mad, mad respect. <laughs> All right. I think we got, uh, do we got enough here, Helga, to, to give him, give uh, brick a wrap up here? Well, what I'm going to say first is I think that we should give brick a moment to say, is there anything you want to ask a specific question about of like some of the stuff we went over? Cause I can tell that all the coaches are super happy. We get to do this again. Uh, <laughs> and we were just like info dumping on you. Uh, it's been so a while. I'd like to give you space uh, to say like, Hey, um, and or ask a question about anything that any of us went over uh, before we give you the, the top three things to work on. Yeah. I think the only real question I had was about something that you said in terms like going back to basics, what basics specifically do you think I should be, focusing on more than anything else is it is it all the basics or are there specific things that i should be 
targeting, oh, yeah. I think. So basic body mechanics. I want you to like pretend that you're a brand new fighter and teaching yourself how to throw a flat snap. Um, and I want you to learn how to feel the tension through your body. Um, and so when you're loaded, you should feel the tension on that that wants to release. Um, and so that's a, that's a very basic concept that we work on. And then from there, how to recover yourself from being out of balance. Um, because that's where you panic and you make like a really hard decision in your fight. And I, I use panic as a very broad term. It's not like you're like losing your mind or anything. You're just, that's when you bear down in your fight is put yourself out of balance and teach yourself how to recover back to power. Um, and so that's a, it's a fun, I can show you a, a Pell drill for that, uh, which is actually kind of fun and geeky um, if you want to go over it. Um, but I'd really say is that recovering and building your base again. Um, and then from there, what Thorfinn said, footwork. But until you understand how your body generates power, it's again, footwork is going to be a little bit more than what you need right now. Like just get yourself back to power, back to power, back to power. Then we'll work on footwork. Then we'll work on position and recovery. Um, and recovery in there depends on the fighter, by the way. Um, Sean will totally argue with me about this one. We've had many a heated argument about this. Um, I give a fuck about recovery until you have power generation and he's like recovery first. I've discovered that it depends on the fighter. So um, you may need to learn to recover better first before generating power. And this is gonna be something that you're gonna learn on the Pell and at practice is if where, what your brain is gonna wanna hyper-focus on first. Does that, make, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Uh, Thorfinn, you got a little more wrap up? Y'all done? Yeah, yeah. I, okay, so first off, I'd say uh, movement. That's the whole idea with the footwork idea. Learning to uh, be able to close that that gap um, while on guard and trust that you're safe, right? Uh, and that's that's huge. So to work on movement, this you can do this also with your pel work, right? So you can move around your pel when you're you're attacking it and letting the blade, uh, you know, uh, which is going to kind of piggyback on to one of my other ob uh, observations is letting the blade flow where it needs to go, right? So you can feel the the from the, the recoil of the, of the blow on the target, where it wants to go, right? The other thing is uh, timing, like, so what I mean by timing is like blow selection. Uh, timing is also don't throw that blow at range two when you probably should have thrown at range one. So what you wanna do is you wanna be able to move through the ranges, fire when it's the appropriate time and feeling where the fight is going. So rather than making the fight go where you want it to go, because your opponent may not do that for you, just rather just let it happen fluidly. So if you, you know, if, if you think to yourself, I really like my offside body, uh, but Sir Steve always blocks your offside body, that's not the fight to have, right? So instead, when you attack him or they attack you, something is going to happen open with your timing, your movement, everything, allowing you then to see the next uh, where you need to be. And this is all things we're all working. Okay, uh, great set of fights. Thank you very much. And I really appreciate you uh, uh, putting your videos forward. Absolutely, thanks. Cool, and uh, for my wrap up there, um, first off, to get back to what Hilda was saying, um, uh, re recovery absolutely is my pet peeve. And what you're going to find is all the best trainers in our, in our sport. We all have that one pet peeve. The one thing that we see as the thing that like, to me, offense recovery is the single biggest failing in our sport. It is the one thing that people fail to do most, most frequently that could very easily be fixed and, and really improve your, improve your fighting. Um, and that's, that is absolutely my focus. That's, that's one thing I'm going to focus on. Um, you know, Helga, we'll talk to you about facing the weapon. Um, you know, uh, Bronos and Ron Valder will we'll talk to you about, uh, about footwork. Um, and footwork absolutely is where the, where the fight starts, but we've all got our pet peeve. That one is mine. Absolutely. I'm, I'm unashamed about that. And what you're going to find is for, for each of us that has that pet peeve, we are all right. Collectively, <laughs> none of us is right exclusively, but we are all right collectively. <laughs> All of the things that, that turn out as our pet peeve, like, yeah, all of those things, those are bad things to be doing. So, you know, so fix those things, right? Um, we just all happen to have a, a different focus on what those things are. Um, so 
yeah, recovery is always the thing, but I think more for you, I think it's going to be finding that offensive mindset. It's going to be finding that organic flow. It's going to be letting the fight happen without forcing it to happen. As, as Thorfinn was saying, you know, one of the things about that is that, uh, you know, one of the things we talk about on the show a lot is it is a lot easier for you to get some, your opponent to do what they want to do than to get them to do what you want them to do when you're trying to force the fight to happen in a certain way and your opponent doesn't accommodate that, um, then you're spending a lot of effort trying to make something happen as opposed to capitalizing on what they are already providing you. Um, and that takes a little bit of, um, it takes some vision in the fight. And the thing is, I mean, uh, I also agree with Aldi, you need to go back to your, back to your basics. Um, I, I would suggest to do that, that, you discover your method for teaching basic stick mechanics because you got your stick mechanics from somebody else, probably Colin, probably somebody else in the VDK. Um, but I think it's, I think it's time for you to develop your training methodology in how you teach those mechanics because as you teach mechanics, you're going to gain a better understanding of, of what those, those mechanics are. Um, and you know, the innate mechanics that you have are, are good enough and close enough that what Helga was talking about is like, you need to refocus on them a little bit to sharpen them. But I think by, by discovering your training methodology for those things, it is going to give you that focus that you need. And it's going to kind of bring that back around and, and you'll gain a better understanding of what those mechanics are for your body, not for Cullen's body. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Um, uh so I cannot like that hard enough right there at all. Like Sean just hit the nail on the head. Um, and if you don't have somebody to teach, teach your left hand. That's what I did. Like we're, we're all gifted with a student. Not many yeah. of us are ambi. I guarantee the, the other side of your brain will 100% be a student that doesn't care how much you cuss yep. at it. Yeah, because right now your, your right hand doesn't know what it's like to not know how to do this. You, you've been doing this long enough that your right arm just knows and if you go out there and tell somebody you just do it like this you're not teaching them how to do it so yeah teach your left hand how to do it that's what i did i mean there was a number of years ago when, when i made that realization that my my right arm doesn't know what it's like to not know and so i taught my left hand and that's why i teach the mechanics the way that i do but i think that'll get you back to that focus and and it will um it, it'll it'll uh get you a better understanding of what those mechanics are so uh yeah stick mechanics um, offensive mindset, um, and get, get rid of your preconceived notions. So, uh, any other questions for you, Brick? Does that all make sense? Is there anything yeah, else? We absolutely. Need to I don't think I have any other questions right now. No. Okay, cool. All right. Black Wolf, now that you've seen us abuse poor Brick there, are you sure you're ready for this? Oh yeah, I am. Uh, also, I would like to just point out that they, like, I managed to push Sean's button tonight, and then he just like very eloquently was like, politely, fuck off slightly. And another thing. <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> well, Recovery I'm is you. the most important. <laughs> Recovery is my most important thing. <laughs> All right. Let's get, to, let's get to some video for Black Wolf here. I see that all right. There we go. Yep. I'm gonna cut the audio on that. Uh Black Wolf is in the red. Oh, let's ask that Correct. question too. Black Wolf, what are you working on right now? Uh breathing has been a huge one. Um that lateral movement, um, as well as watching and facing the weapon through the fight. Okay. And who are you fighting here? This That's is uh, Sir Daniel Aquitaine. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, you were right earlier then. Now, Black Wolf, this uh, blocking stick, is, are, we, are we using this as a primary defensive? Are we learning to do another uh, uh, defensive like shield or something? Um, this is just a, a transition for 
you know, defensive shield. Um, it won't be the primary. I was using a bigger um, kite shield and I was blocking my view, then mm -hmm. pulling it down, getting hit in the face every single time. Sure. Um, so it was recommended that I use something like this to not only get my feet moving, but also be able to see the shots as well. Understood, yeah. So there was a leg shot that looks like it comes through here in a minute. Let's have a, can we rewind that? Also to be sassy, I think Thorfinn, you need to billboard the top of your hat because when you're watching the video, that's all we can see. So oh, we, need to, we need to like- oh, Okay, I didn't realize it was, uh, I was visible. Uh, <laughs> we need to we need to sell like billboard plackets right there i know right well damn it i'll get a better hat next time <laughs> this one's just a little pub i like am i the center of the thing or is the, the video is sure this is like you're talking about yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay. Okay, so you were talking you were working on lateral motion. So this is good. You moved laterally. Um it just so happened that he moved laterally the other way and he got he got the better of this where you basically ended up bringing your leg into his stick yeah exactly you stepped around your center stick yeah yeah and as you as you did your 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 uh your hand came up your defensive hand is coming up as his stick is going oh okay i think i think that daniel did some kind of like a pump fake idea right yeah. so to draw yeah to draw his, to draw that up um and that was just a uh, a fake failure. Now the thing is that with the small stick like that, you have very little room for mistakes. Obviously, what do you guys see in there? All right, let's see how this ends. Oh, kind enough of you to drag him out of the sun. <laughs> all right so one thing i want to say that you did pretty well here when you're fighting from your knees as you know i tell people all the time if you don't know what to do with somebody just start shooting at their head because they have to account for every single one of those blows um, as they're coming in. So I think the frequency of blows that you had was really good where you're, were, you're were throwing enough that he wasn't able to just wade in uncontested and, you know, make a plan on how he was, how he's going to uh, kill you. So, so being able to, to fire and, and you're not, you're, you're not just going more aggressive. You're just firing at, at a steady pace, not at, not not a horrendous pace you're just firing frequently enough to keep him busy to keep him uh from having that time to think and at the same time trying to find some uh, some angles uh that you can that you can hit as well so i think i think that was done pretty well and i think you said he ended up hitting your arm on this one at the end I think so. It's a little hard to see in the shadow from my screen. Okay, you got anything on that? You want to watch the next one? So uh, I've got a couple things, but I would like to watch the next one because I have a, I have a sneaky okay. suspicion we're going to see the same issue occur. All right, let's keep going then. It is weird that they're both using the same defensive style, which is, re which is really, uh, you know, and, and, really fun, I'm to, guessing, fun to watch. I'm guessing Daniel's kind of new at that too. Brett, that was his maybe his first day using it. Oh, okay. So he's, yeah. uh, we're working on switching him from a 20 year career of a uh, side strapped to a center grip shield. Yep. And his just 
tail was everywhere. So we had to, this was Ragnar's idea and it works really well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my Squire Vig is using the Mr. Stick right now, too. Mr. Stick, I mean, is a it's a whole thing, right? And you have yep. to learn that that center line, if, you're, if your shield style depends on the center line, well, yep. then just give them the center line, right? And, and then from there, they can, you know, grow it from there. Another Mr. Stick, Mr. Stick. It's a big thing where I live right now. <laughs> it's, it's catching on. No, I'm serious. It's like uh, half the guys at practice use Mr. Stick. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I, go, I, I go there. I'm like, I, I feel like you know, I'm the weirdo with the shield. I have picked up my shield again to try to incorporate. Yeah, I think we uh, two weeks ago we fought with that, right? Or yeah, with that. The video is it, jumping pretty hard for me. Yeah, yeah me as well. Yeah, it's 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 coming through like every fifth frame, Sean. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> it's, like, it's like great strobe lighting right now. Yeah. Um. Well, let's try another one. So while you're fixing that, I can actually talk about a concept with Mr. Stick and Madu's in general, which I think is kind of fun and a lot of people don't actually go over, is a shield's ability to block is not actually dictated by its width, it's dictated by its length. The majority of our shots come in at a perpendicular angle to the, to the top of the shield. So a Madu or Mr. Yeah, Stick. Yeah, coming in crap uh, A Mr. Stick ends up giving us the same advantages with all the view. Why do I like fighting with a 13 by 19 heater? Because I can see everything coming in. Uh, but it's got enough weight in it that it stops blows versus kind of spinning around like a stick. Um, and so I think that's the reason why it's kind of becoming popular um, and why modules are very effective is because we do not fight to create parallel lines with a stick in somebody's hands. We fight with and to make parallel lines with the top and side of shields. So this is actually a detriment to the shield fighting community overall and a very large advantage for somebody that picks up Mr. Stick and then frustrates the hell out of people, uh, they can't hit them because they're like, well, there's no shield there. Well, you're throwing right into the line that I've got covered anyways. Yeah, I don't, um, I'm not sure why this video is not picking up as well as the other one was. Oh, hang on a second. Let me drop the speed on that again. No, oh, it is. It's a three tick, 360, so... Yeah, it's coming. It's still coming in super choppy. Oh yeah. Bandwidth fail. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure why that's. I'm not sure why Brick's video is coming in better. Maybe it's because because it's coming from the East Coast. It's, uh, I was about to say, know. how many teenagers on the house in the house at your place are now on the internet because they're home from school? Um, both of them are out right now, but your point is well taken. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know. Do you want to do you want to try to bring it up, Helga? I don't know if it's going to be better for you. I know yours was kind of choppy too. Uh, mine was shit earlier. So well, let me close the other one there. So. Yeah, and honestly, at this point, uh, it's it's almost impossible to tell what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone. Um, had you guys looked at this earlier? Do you guys have anything else? Uh, um, I, I did there? look at it. I actually watched all those videos earlier. All right. I was I was there when this happened, but. <laughs> <clears throat> so. All right. I, I think I got enough to give him some uh, give him some stuff to work on here too. So. Well, do you want to drop it back to all our faces then? Because then they can see all our weird faces that we make at each other. That's right. Larger than life. Start with your face. What, mine? You want me to go first? Why not? All right, under the bus. You ready for this, Black Wolf? Yep, let's do it. Okay. I'm actually super happy with the improvement I see out of you. Okay. What? Um, so compliment first. Now we go, now we go to ripping this apart a little bit. Um, you are jumping through C range. 
Uh, and you can even see that with where we're getting every five frames. You're jumping from the edge of measure all the way into your fight and you are lunging through it, which is where Daniel was punking you. Um, is because you are extending yourself out. So what you're doing is you're throwing your tools out and then you're gathering yourself up to your tools. And so you're literally C range is tools all the way through the range, then body through the range. Uh, and this is kind of consistent through all your videos. Um, and you're even trying to do it on your knees. Because uh, apparently B and A feel much more comfortable and safety wise, uh, which is probably the reason why your knight had you move away from the slightly bigger shield um, is because that shield is going to be very successful in B and A because you can hide, you can basically tuck yourself behind it and then you can use your hand here to stop this motion so you can control their weapon. So we're now speaking to you are fighting in an offensive manner in a defensive mindset. So you are basically exploding into defense. Um, which is kind of an interesting thing. Also, it's something that I was really bad about as an adult. It's like, holy mother of God, Sean would yell at me. I swear to God, he wanted to shot collar at any point. Just stop jumping through range. Um, and so what I'm going to say is that overall, what I'm seeing is a little bit of a lack of patience in your fights, um, which again, is going to talk to you. You're not looking at your opponent. You're looking at their tools. Um, and so by looking at your opponent, you're going to take the time to let their tools develop into what they're going to go. So they're going to make the decision and then you're going to get to capitalize on the decision. Um, and because you're being patient, you can then relax and move through it. Because you are rushing it, you are tensely trying to meet their decision. So you're playing a guess and check game where you're like, well, if I'm here, then they only have X, Y, and Z. And so I can just defend X, Y, and Z. And if I survive this, I can then try to hit them. And so that's the reason why also you're seeing these very hard, heavy handed blocks. You're seeing your body crunch down into the blocks. You're seeing your stance crunch down into them. The bright side in this is your body mechanics are actually mostly maintaining through this process, which means if we can get you to relax, your fight is going to speed up. Um, and also, so will your blocks. They will speed up almost exponentially because now you're relaxed and you're not having to unlock your muscles before you can go to the next thing does that make sense and are you also seeing that in your fight yes yes i am uh i, I do get excited and the c range is not comfortable so i just want to i want to get in there and start it so why is the c range not comfortable uh, i don't know uh, i'm not sure is it because you're like five seven and you get flat snapped a lot in that range by much taller people he's five nine He's like two inches taller than I am, and I'm 5'5". Five, 5'11". Five. Five <laughs> on a good helmet I day? Didn't like. right. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. I thought with the helmet on, I couldn't tell anything. With a helmet on and pumps. Uh, it's almost six foot, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing next to you next event and being like, you are not 5'11". Just so <laughs> sure, Either sure. I'm lying to myself saying I'm 5'5". Five, five, one of the two. Um. So do you, what's the threat there? Like, can you just, you don't even need to answer it tonight. What I want you to think about the next time you get an armor is why. Why is C uncomfortable? Because until you understand that, you're not going to be able to address it. Do you feel like you're going to need a flat snap? Do you feel like you're not loaded properly? Do you feel like your opponent has an advantage? Is that where your threat radar is going off? Um, because, I think it's the threat, the threat radar. Okay. And... I don't know if, if doing Pell work in A and B so much, uh, can that also be attributed to that? Yes, because then you don't know where you sure. can land and see. Also, you start to see, you know, since a C range is never a, an attack on you, you're nervous because you don't know where things are going, mm -hmm. right? And so if you, what you need to work on, uh, I'll wait till my turn, but okay. Oh no! Is perfect. It, Please go like that. That was my thing. Say, like, is it Thorfinn's turn? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so <clears throat> what it sounds to me, what you need to do is you need to focus on being able to transition uh, safely, what you feel is safely, into your your actual ranges of the of your fight, right? So if C range and I and guys like I, one two three A B C C, you know, I don't even know. So what I'm saying if in this particular case, if we're saying C is the outside one, uh, you need to move through that. Uh, and you need to feel safely doing it, right? And so what you, it seems to me is that you are becoming tense because you don't feel comfortable with your own defense to be able to protect you through that zone. 
right? And and that is, this is going to sound like, and I, I love to play this whole drum, but uh, it's uh, fundamentals. Learn your fundamentals because then you can then transition through any range to where you need to be by having your uh, your defense be there to protect you and having trust in it. You have to have the 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 trust to believe that you can then move through all these ranges and back out again um, safely. So really what you need to focus on is that transition of range, okay? That's gonna be a huge deal for you. I would love to see you, now that I know why you're doing this, this Mr. Stick, mm -hmm. I would love to see half of practice uh, be shield, half Mr. Stick still, okay? So that way you're actually applying some of the fundamentals from Mr. Stick to your shield and you're seeing how that's affecting everything. Because Mr. Stick's gonna be great at giving you that upside, that line, right? Which is it, which is essential to that uh, center grip kite shield you're doing. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't give you the cush factor of having all of this other stuff to allow you to transition through your ranges, right? You always have to be like, is that guy gonna stab me? Is it, you know? Uh, so instead you can have the kind of, I can move through these things because of my fundamental skills I've learned through Mr. Stick and movement, right? Other than that, I think you're doing pretty good. I, I fight you on a regular basis. And I'm, I think that, uh, that yeah, I think that those are the type of things you need to work on, right? And uh, of course, uh, footwork is never a bad thing to learn. Always focus on your footwork. So that being said, I think that's my three. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that was that was absolutely the thing that I was going to mention too is your transition from the C range to the B range. Uh, for people that are watching out there that that might not have an understanding what how we define these things. Personally, <clears throat> I define the B range um, from the offensive side as the point at which I can place the sweet spot of my stick on my opponent's yeah. temple. Um, and, and actually for me, that's the, that's the temple of somebody who's six foot tall, because that's the average, uh, height of the best fighters in our sport. So pretty much black wolf side, pretty much, you know, black wolf <laughs> might have to lift his hand a little bit, you know, from his five, seven or whatever <laughs> Helga thinks he is. Um, we're getting yeah, the so, measuring stick next event guys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so that's how I define B range is where I can put the sweet spot of my stick on the temple of my opponent. Okay. Um, the C range for me is, is where at my fullest extension, I can barely touch my opponent. Okay. Now the thing to understand about the difference between transitioning C range to B range, and this is where, this is where you're having a problem. And, and Helga's seeing exactly the same thing I'm seeing is, and this is very common. In fact, this idea that transitioning C to B range has to be done faster. And that in order to do it faster, that you have to jump into range or rush into range or what have you, right? But if you think about the difference between those two ranges, the difference between C range and B range is literally a foot span. One foot span, your foot span, not my foot span. Because, you know, since yeah. since yeah. Helga thinks I'm six inches taller than you, um, my foot span is going to be bigger than you. <laughs> I'm just, I have just determined from this conversation, I must be taller than I think I am. Like, at this Wait. point in time, like... No, no, I, I think that myself... you think you're taller than you are. Yeah. I, mean, I know, okay, I know my personality and ego are bigger than my physical it, body, okay? It makes up for a lot. It does. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and that's why I always say that it's it's the difference between C range and B range is a foot span. It's not a number of inches, it's a foot span, right? If you were to if you were to just move each of your feet that length forward, you are you are you've gone from C range where you can barely touch your opponent at the very extension of your range, you've stepped squarely into your B range. Yeah. So when you when you think you want to engage the fight and when you think you want to go from C range to B, B range from a from a purely physical perspective transitioning from C to B is literally as easy as taking a step you just take one step forward and if you take that step forward and you're and you can't then put your sweet spot of your stick on your opponent well you weren't, you weren't really in C range you weren't anyway. in C range anyway yeah <laughs> yeah 
So you take you take that step. And the, the, the problem that we come into is when we engage range, we are aware of the dangers of being within our opponent's striking distance, right? And because fight or flight reaction, the fight the flight reaction is so much more predominant in what we do, we are not as aware of the opportunities that we are creating by putting ourselves in a position to have access to targets, right? So there's this mix between like fear and opportunity, right? If I if I get too close, he can hit me. Well, you know what? If you get close enough, you can hit them too, right? right. And that's the whole thing about establishing range is when you decide that you're ready to engage the fight, you literally just have to take one step in. And when you do, that's where the fight really starts. And when you take that step, now you are in pursuit, right? And, and the phrase that I often use for this is, you know, when, when we go from somebody that wants to rush into range from D range or C range and, and get as close as you can to, and rush in there to, to keep from getting hit, well, when that happens, when you're spending so much focus on, on, on getting to a certain physical distance, you're actually blinding yourself to what is really happening in the fight. You can't see what's happening. You can't see how your opponent is responding to that because your, uh, your adrenaline and your emotions are so focused on, I need to get to there. Whereas if you can just very calmly just take a step into range, now you can see everything that's happening. You can see how your opponent re is responding. And when you, um, when you take that step, and then the next thing that happens is you're observing how your opponent has responded to that. Now, that may very well be that they're taking a shot at you, but that's a response, right? But now you're able to see that response because you're not so emotionally invested in getting, getting a certain distance. Helga? Okay, Buzz, the best way to drill this, by the way, or the best way, at least for me to drill this, uh, all of us will have different ones. Again, all coaches will hyper-focus on whatever we're going to hyper-focus on, which is our favorite little thing. Uh, range happens to be one of my geeks because um, I'm short. Um, one of the best ways to do this is in a He's first around level. five eight. I mean, I'm gonna go with that now. Like personality says, I'm five eight. Um, so, but one of the best ways to do this is randomly. You're not gonna tell your opponent you're doing this at practice, but where there is nothing on the line, you can't win practice. Practice is just data. Um, is find the edge of measure a couple times with different opponents. Go find it with a new fighter. Go find it with an older fighter. And like the first couple times, it's literally from out of range, step into range. You're going to learn, one, that you don't actually know where range is. Uh, and two, what their reactions are going to start to be. You'll find some fighters will tense up and they'll like lean into the fight. You're going to find other fighters are going to start to back out of the fight. You are going to actually teach yourself exactly what Sean is talking about. You are going to take away the fight or flight and you're going to get into analyzing the fight beforehand. So you're going to start looking at your opponent. You're going to start looking at what they're doing. And then later on, because it's not going to be an instant tool until you have some data, um, you're now then going to know how to manipulate the fight at the edge of measure. You're going to become more comfortable breaking measure because you're going to start understanding your opponent in front of you. Thorfinn totally put his hand up. I did. I did. I did. Um, what I want to say is you need to learn to have your defense and your offense working well enough together that as you transition into this range, which is now in combat range, right? You can feel comfortable, right? Cause C range is pretty much really long shots. You have a lot of time, right? When that's coming in, you should be able to block most anything coming in at C range, but having this com being comfortable enough to be, to walk in and then assess your opponent and what they're doing, like Helga was saying, People react differently, right? Sean said some people are going to throw a shot right away. All of these things, right? But if you have the comfort to walk in because you've learned to trust your defense, your offense, your stance, you, you know, all of those things kind of all have to be together as you transition into that, that, that combat zone. Once you come into actual combat range, you have to be comfortable enough to allow yourself to stand there, right? You have to have the the martial art nailed down to where you can walk in and you can block something okay at that point then allows you then to see what the opponent does and, or if your opponent just cows or whatever you can then extrapolate on that too right but you have to have that comfort to walk into that area and know you're safe 
or at least trust in yourself that you're safe because sometimes you get hit who knows but uh that's a, that's a huge thing and i i obviously work on this like like helga said find different opponents and find out what that feels like for each one of them right the more times you experience um each one of these differences the faster your your combat computer uh can then database it right you want to have to where you walk in you see that thing you know instantly and the only 10,000 hours guys we're all trying to get 10,000 hours to be experts at this thing the faster you the more practices the more experiences you have the faster you get that 10,000 hours yeah okay so, so we had had a, a question um uh, Johan, the Black Duke uh, out of the Outlands that asked us uh, to define A range as well. So uh, let me just cover that real quick. Um, so in these different ranges, like I said, you go from the, the C range is where we typically start a fight when we call lay on. Um, we all kind of, that's where you kind of sit out and size each other up because again, you're at your fullest extension of your, of your reach where I could touch my opponent, but we're not really engaged in the fight at that point. And as, as to Thorfinn's point, anything that happens in that C range when your opponent starts into something, you can just easily just void that out and just kind of back it up and 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 oh, and, just, yeah. and and to account for the blow that's that's coming in. So the B range, to me, that is where I get the best access to the most targets with the easiest mechanics. Okay, when we're talking about just textbook pell work mechanics, that's where I want to be to be able to deliver just a basic mechanic. And the thing with the A range is. That's right up close and personal. That to me is like a boxer's clinch. Um, yeah, you're real tight. You're real tight up in there. Um, there are shots that I can throw in that range, but the mechanics are not as easy as they are in textbook B range, pell work range. So in order for me to get to some of those really, really tight shots, you don't have the room in front of you to, to throw basic mechanics. So you basically have to create that room somewhere else. Um, and and why do boxers go to a clinch, right? To stop because, the fight. Because it's safe. Yeah. To stop safe, the fight. Yeah. 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 Stop yep. the fight. Stop the fight. It's safe. You go in there because you're denying your opponent um, room to execute their their shots. And so a range for us does a lot of that same stuff where you are denying your opponent access to targets, but you're also denying yourself access to targets as well. And the, and the targets you can get to have more complicated mechanics to, to get there. So a lot of people go to a range in our, in our fight because it's a safe place to be. Um, Cause if you just, you know, climb up on top of somebody, you know, that they, they, they don't have a lot of targets, but you know, guess what? There, there, there are things that I can do in that range. And ultimately we need to be able to fight at all these different ranges um, sure. to really be able to, to compete in what we're doing. Cause you don't know who's going to just jump your shit. Helga. We equate, especially with newer fighters, this is the reason why we have a lot of newer fighters do this, we equate survival to success. So we set our newer fighters up for loving A range and blowing through uh, B and C range to get to A range because then we go, man, you survived like four or five shots from that Duke. Well done. We are accidentally setting our students up for success. Right now, A range needs to probably be completely removed from what you're doing. Um, sorry, you just touched on that, Sean, and I was like, oh, hang on, I have, I have thoughts about yeah, that. No, that's fine. Um, no, my a, ADHD brain engaged. <laughs> um, but one of those things we need to look for is where we set ourselves up as trainers for students and where our students have been set up for failure because survival is not success. Um, and we do this very commonly. We tell our, oh my God, you did so well. Yeah, you lost a fight, but you did so well because you survived three or four blows that's really good for about the first six months and then after that we need to be like okay cool like you did really well because your foot your footwork was there your mechanics were there or your stick recovery was there tm sean um like, Aww. Aww. <laughs> like she loves me <laughs> yeah it, those little things and so you need to start shifting the same thought patterns in your brain same with brick this is huge for you you need to start shifting the thought patterns in your brain to what success actually is. Success is not survival in the fight. You guys have grown beyond that. Both of you as fighters have grown way beyond that. This is where we start setting victory conditions to create better ideas of success in the fight. And that may mean that you're going to lose more fights. Oh yeah, I can guarantee it means you're going to lose more fights. That's that's the nature of victory conditions is that, that progress, like body count is a convenient byproduct of progress it's it's not the empirical indicator of progress yeah. 
But body make... count, body count at practice should always be accidental. Yep. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Practice is practice. That's how we build our fundamentals, right? So it, it's important that we focus on that. It's not about winning those fights. It's about improving your martial art in whatever aspect you need to do right now. So if right now is breathing and movement, well, okay, that's winning. At the end of the night, are you breathing better and moving better? That's winning. Because I'm going to tell you what, in, later on in your fighting career, that will turn into wins at tournaments. Okay, so as you baby step forward, you think, thinking, oh, I'm just baby step, baby step, baby step, right? But that's all we're trying to do, all of us. We're trying to move forward continuously, right? So don't be afraid to, to, to have these minor successes or micro successes at, that we were talking about in other uh, coaching uh, corner stuff in order for you to move your martial art forward, okay? That's a victory. Yeah. At the end of fighter practice, who cares who won? No one knows. Right. Well, and and in fact, you know, one of the other um, more stringent looks on victory conditions is, you know, you you set those conditions at the beginning of, of the evening at practice and say, this is the thing that I'm working on. Right. Yep. And any victory that you get, any win you get in a fight that does not include somehow you progressing on this deficiency that you need work on in Black Wolf, in this case, it's going to be establishing range going from C range to B range, just casually taking that step. And any success, the, any win that you get that does not include you making progress in that deficiency, you need to consider that a failure. Right. Because yeah. you may have won the fight, but you didn't make yourself a better fighter. Yep. Yeah, it's okay to take ownership of that, right? To say to yourself, this is actually what I set myself before, you know, and that's what's okay to work on. Again, I, you don't you don't see guys go to you know uh, you know a, a champion boxers you know who, who their their mission tonight is to knock out the guy they're training with. That's not it at all. They're working on their uppercut, or they're working on breathing, or rage, or movement, or all these things. That's how we need to see practice. Yep. We need to see practice as a way for us to, you know, micromanage our our progress through our martial art. So it's something to and, think about. And, and to be fair, Black Wolf, I know you know a lot of this. And so this is this is good information for a lot of the people that are watching. I agree with Helga. I've been watching your fighting for a couple of years and, and you are definitely working on these things. Um, Brick, I've been mm -hmm. watching watching you fight as well. You guys are both making some great progress in, in your fights. And I think these are things that that you know on some level, but but uh, hopefully it'll it'll help to kind of have those uh, spilled out a little bit better for for folks watching and and just kind of just kind of remind you that that if that's what you're doing, if you set your victory conditions, then you're you're on the right track. Um, and I think for you, Black Wolf, uh, this is going to be yeah your your most recent one is going to be establishing range, and that happens with um, one of Thorfinn's pet peeves, and that is footwork, right? I mean, range is everything. Like you have to be in a position to put stick on your opponent. Yep. And that happens with your feet, and if you let your feet lead you instead of trying to instead of deciding what you're going to do and then fabricating footwork to support that let the footwork lead you put yourself in a position and be comfortable with just the the basic concept of use of just getting positioning first and once you're in position then you let the fight happen without happening to you keynote <laughs> all right well, we're coming up on uh seven o'clock uh black wolf do you have any further questions before we before we start wrapping up here a little bit um just uh do you have any um advice or training methods with working range on a pel um put tape yeah on the we ground. Can... yeah yeah like literally spray paint the ground or put tape on the ground if you don't know where your range is give yourself a visual aid Put, a, put tape on your stick. This is where my sweet spot is. These are the two percussion points. Your stick only has two percussion points. Those are where it's gonna be the easiest to generate power. One is about three inches above your hilt because you're just basically punching them. And the other one is about four inches from the tip of your stick. Eh, three to four inches, depending on the weight of your stick and your basket hilt. You can find it. It is where the stick turns. Um, and so find those percussion points, mark them on your pel or mark them on your stick, mark the spots on your pel that you wanna hit 
mark the ground where your feet are. Put a big fat ABC right next to them. Work around that and don't just do a single line. Don't don't right. kill your lateral motion I by not tell doing you this more. in multiple positions around your pel. It should basically be almost like rings around your pel. So you can step to different ranges while practicing your lateral motion. It should look like, if you're looking over the top of it, it should look a like big ass fucking target. Um, and so if you do this, you can actually just stop when you're like, what range am I in? And look down. Okay, there we go. I know where it's at. Like this is this is a cheater trick that none of us use, and I don't know why. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> right on. Uh Brick, do you have any other questions? Did we lose him? No, I was on mute. Sorry. No, I don't have any other questions right now. All right, cool. Well, um, like I said, we're at seven o'clock. Um, so uh Helga Thorfinn, you guys got any any final thoughts? No, I'm good. I I enjoyed both uh, sets of videos. Uh, not Black Wolves as much, but uh, sorry, there was a bad there was a bad uh, feed there. But uh, honestly, I think uh, both you guys are on a good path, and yeah, you know, you're you're well on your way to uh, uh, seeing uh, success. Yeah, Thorfinn, what what's the episode we got coming up on Friday? Uh, Friday, this one is the Crown. Mindset, this, I think, is what it is. Training this, for crowns. Secrets to train the secrets. Quote. Yeah, secrets to train training for, for crowns. crowns. Yeah, that right should on. be a fun one. And then um, I think I don't know the next one after that. Yeah, uh, we're gonna have uh, Duke Allen on joining us uh, for that episode as well. So um, that, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be a fun one. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. Helga, any final thoughts? Uh, final thoughts is I want to I'm gonna give Brick a little shout out because I gave one to Black Wolf right beforehand, uh, and I told totally <laughs> you to do this for Brick. Uh, I am very impressed with your ability. So you were finding success in what you were doing before the pandemic. You were finding success by being a very strong forward fighter that overwhelmed your opponent. Uh, and you were winning. There was a body count associated with that. And so I just want to say that it's really, really cool to see you step back and reset and take the losses and take the frustration and take the time to train to become better. That is actually how we all get. If you if you talk to every every Super Duke out there, I can guarantee they have reset their fighting at least twice in their career. I'm like, doing it again right now. Yeah, we're doing it again like, right now. Guaranteed, <laughs> at least twice, if not. I mean, and that's like the Super Dukes where they're just like, oh, I picked up a stick and it naturally melded with my hand and my body. Like that's, and they had two. Everybody else is going to tell you they've done it over and over again. And typically, it was at a frustration point or a failure point or a fucking injury. Excuse my language. I'm the coach that cusses. I get everybody else's <laughs> F-bombs. I thought I was the coach, the coach that cusses, damn it. Uh, we can wrestle over it? Oh, yeah. Uh, Fine, fuck it. Fuck it. You can be the coach that cusses. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I just wanted to give that shout out. And then, Sean, I don't know how you do this. Oh, my God. You, all, you seem to give us people that are paired up with roughly the same range issue. Weird. Both of you guys are rushing range. Um, I would highly recommend later on both of you geeking out, watching your videos and looking at it because you have very similar issues that are presenting in two different ways um, because we're looking at two different fighting styles. So again, we're still going back down to the base issue, slowing down the fight, controlling range on the approach and not bricks starting to show up as pre-programming and trying to force the fight. Yours is showing up as jumping through range to survive the fight. Both of them are still range problems trying to survive the fight um and so i would really i would really love to have you guys geek out later on both your fights and i think you could learn a lot from each other because you have the same issue going on and you could address that with each other yeah that sounds great right on well so again we'd like to thank our uh thank our guests for joining us uh brick and black wolf uh, both of you appreciate you coming on um we've got uh two more lined up for august i think as august 23rd is is the next one we're doing for video review um not not uh don't have that in front of me right now but i know we got a couple lined up and uh for anybody else that's watching out there um if you uh, if you're not if we haven't already contacted you and if you're interested in sending us some video to to go over uh, again we've got we've got enough to do out to about november right now but uh, if you send us some more and you want to get on the list uh, we can we can add you to the list and uh, we can go over uh, do this for you and go over your fights and and try to help you become better fighters so um Thanks as always uh, to Sir Helga and his Grace Thorfinn um, for uh, hanging out and helping out with this. And um, yeah, we'll see you all on Friday. So everybody have a good night. Cheers.
Thank you all. Thanks for having us. Bye.